president spoke about the uh, importance of uh, the support of the international community for uh, the Libyans in this upcoming st uh, stage in order to help Libya achieve a safe haven. We'll be speaking about uh, the Libyan situation, the Libyan development, this uh, particular conference and the future of Libya within the uh, circumstances surrounding the state. We'll be speaking about that uh, later on with, uh, in our episode. Before we delve into our discussion, first let's have a quick look on the Arab news that took place during this week and we'll come back for more discussion. President Abdel Fattah Sisi praised strong historical relations binding Egypt and Jordan as he received Jordanian Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II in Cairo on Tuesday. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Rodi said that the president asked the Jordanian Crown Prince to convey his regards to the Jordanian King. For his part, Al Hussein conveyed King Abdullah's II greetings to President Sisi, expressing appreciation to the Egyptian leadership and people. President Abdel Fattah Sisi confirmed the joint Arab responsibility to confront the challenges facing the region, especially terrorism and extremist thoughts. The president's remarks came during a meeting via video conference with head of the Arab Intelligence Forum in the frame of the special forum currently being held in Cairo. During the meeting, President Sisi stressed the need to adopt a comprehensive approach in dealing with regional crises through ending any foreign interference in the affairs of the Arab region, respecting the will and the decision and the solve sovereignty of national states and its institutions. President Abdel Fattah Sisi held a telephone call with Iraqi Prime Minister Mustafa al qadhimi who survived an assassination attempt by an armed drone in Baghdad early on Sunday. Presidential spokesman Ambassador Bassam Rodi said that the Iraqi Prime Minister expressed his appreciation to President Sisi's call, saying that it reflected the deeply rooted historic ties between Cairo and Baghdad. Earlier, President Sisi strongly condemned the assassination attempt that targeted al qadhimi President Sisi tweeted that he anxiously followed up the news of the cowardly terrorist attack, asking God to preserve stability and security in Iraq. Arab League Assistant Secretary General Hossein Zaki said that there was some progress towards resolving a diplomatic crisis between Lebanon and the Gulf countries, spurred by comments that criticized the Arab coalition's intervention in Yemen. Zaki, who is holding meetings in Beirut about the rift, has so far met with President Michel Aoun, Prime Minister Najib Miqati, and Foreign Minister Abdullah Abu Habib. He earlier said that his meeting with Aoun was candid and positive and that he had found an entry point to resolving the crisis, but added that the problem was wider than the comments made by Lebanese Information Minister George Qardahi. Sudan's Commander-in-Chief, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, issued on Thursday a constitutional degree by which he named a new Transitional Sovereignty Council. In a statement, al-Burhan said that he had retained his post as head of the Transitional Council according to the decree. Mohammed Hamdan Diglo, the leader of the Rapid Support Forces, remained his deputy in the 14-member council. The mixed military-civilian body also retained some of the senior army figures. A number of civilian members also retained their post. In October, Al-Burhan dissolved the government led by Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdouk and declared a nationwide state of emergency. Welcome back, and uh, these were the Arab news that took place during this week, including uh, the signing of a new government in Sudan. Hopefully, it would succeed in taking uh, Sudan to a safe haven and uh, to a better uh, future in this upcoming stage. Uh, returning back to our uh, episode and uh, to the uh, this very. Uh, much anticipated conference that took place yesterday in France, the uh, International Conference on Libya. And to highlight the issue we have with us over the phone, uh, His Excellency uh, Mohammed Al Arabi, former uh, Foreign Minister. Good afternoon to you, sir. Uh, good afternoon. Your Excellency, we have seen yesterday this uh, much anticipated International Conference on Libya taking place in France. Uh, let me take uh, your uh, reading to uh, 
the uh, events or the developments inside the conference and the statements of the uh, world leaders there? Well, I think uh, I can say that uh, the uh, international community has accomplished uh, a very good, uh, successful uh, meeting in uh, Paris. I think the outcome of this meeting uh, was uh, reasonable and uh, applicable also. And uh, we will uh, embark on a, a serious process uh, since uh, today till the, uh, the 24th of December in order to try to uh, fulfill all the objectives of uh, the outcome of this conference. Of course, we should admit that we will uh, uh, face uh, some challenges and some difficulties. I think uh, uh, the international community is aware of that and they can deal with all these uh, complications in the uh, near future. But. Uh, what uh, happened yesterday, it was uh, you know, so clear that there, there is a determination from the international community to go forward with the uh, election in, in Libya and to uh, fulfill this uh, peaceful uh, process uh, in the near future. And uh, I think uh, this is a very good step that uh, we have this kind of uh, momentum from the international community in order to help the Libyans to fulfill their ambitions and to have a stable society in the near future. Right. As usual, Egypt uh, has put a kind of roadmap through uh, the speech of President Abdel Fattah Sisi, who illustrated the challenges that are facing Libya. He spoke about the importance of the international uh, community's support to Libya at this very particular stage. He spoke about the exit of foreign mercenaries, and he spoke about mm -hmm. the importance of going ahead with the scheduled elections uh, by December 24th. Um, how far? Uh, do you read uh, the messages that were sent uh, from the president's speech during this conference? And how do the world look at Egypt and its role in uh, Libya? Uh, if we talk about Libya, you will always you know, see that Egypt is instrumental in this uh, peace uh, process there. And I think uh, we got the, uh, uh, the credibility from the international community that Egypt can play an important role, even pivotal role, yeah, you know, to uh, 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 fulfill the ambitions of the Libyans. Uh, we are uh, strictly adhered to the interests of the Libyan people, and everybody knows that. Uh, Libya is part of our national security, and actually Egypt can uh, present to the international community always a uh, reasonable and applicable uh, plan and uh, I think uh, what we will have in the near future of December 24th is part of our Egyptian initiative uh, when the President Sisi was talking about how we can uh, have this kind of rapport between the east uh, side and the west side of Libya and uh, try to unify all the institutions uh, in Libya and have given uh, one armed forces in Libya. So I think our process is always advanced and always, you know, taking care of the interests of the Libyan people and the welfare of, of them. Right. Uh, when we heard yesterday the speech of President Abdel Fattah Sisi, he spoke of the importance of supporting Libya at this upcoming stage. He spoke about an international support and uh, uh -huh. uh, solidarity with Libyans uh, in this upcoming stage. What does Libya need from the international community at this very upcoming stage? I think uh, the uh, Libyan leaders and the Libyan uh, institutions should uh, you know, grasp uh, this opportunity. Otherwise, they will indulge in a chaotic situation and it will be very difficult for them you know, to control the situation inside Libya. Uh, so uh, this is a very good moment and a great even moment for the uh, Libyans that the international community has this one voice and one strategy and they are even against any uh, foreign presence uh, in the, the soil of Libya. So I guess now the responsibility is on the children of the uh, Libyan people and the Libyan leaders to uh, grasp this 
opportunity and to try to advance with uh, peaceful uh, plans in order to uh, pave the way for free election and in the meantime to have a stable society in the near future. Your Excellency, um, the outcome or yesterday the final communique uh, here of the uh, conference has sent uh, um, several messages, the most important of which is uh, the uh, importance of uh, the exit of foreign mercenaries, elsewise yeah. there would be some sanctions on uh, the uh, countries who uh, send uh, foreign troops or Yes. help in the chaotic situation and uh, the other was uh, the importance of supporting the uh, elections the upcoming elections but here I would like to emphasize that uh, the absence of some of the um, leaders of some countries who have uh, who are part of this situation this complicated situation in Libya so how do you view this uh, or, or this message that was sent from uh, the, uh, this international conference and um, uh, at the backdrop of the absence of those leaders? <laughs> I think uh, maybe this is you know, the, the, the first time for an international forum uh, to address directly uh, this country and uh, everybody knows uh, whom behind, you know, the dispatch of these mercenaries uh, for the last uh, few months. And uh, even when we are talking about the plan of the five plus five to withdraw or to uh, expel, you know, those people from the Libyan soil, I think it is still premature to say that we will succeed to uh, kick them out. So that's why the uh, firm position of the international community was necessary yesterday. And even to address the countries, uh, you know, by name, I think it was a very uh, important message from the international community that it is well known who are behind, you know, those people and uh, that they should also react and uh, take them out from the Libyan soil. So I think yesterday's meeting, it was uh, clear and uh, maybe have a sort of uh, courage when they uh, named the countries and they even sent them uh, direct messages in order to be more uh, uh, helpful and more cooperative with the international community to pave the way for a settlement in, on the Libyan soil. And uh, I think we can uh, see some advanced uh, progress uh, 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 from these countries, but uh, so far I didn't receive any reaction actually from, uh, let us say, the country, the region. Uh, uh, and we will wait and see what kind of reaction. But anyway, there is a clear determination from the international community not to succumb to their wishes and to their desire to send you know, those people to Libya. Succumb to the world's warnings because, sir. How do you view, how would Turkey submit to the, uh, uh, to the will of the international community at large? Because yesterday we've seen warnings, uh, 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 unanimous yes. warnings from uh, uh, world leaders and participants in yes, this Yes, the French president was clear, yes, on that. Yeah. Very much indeed. So yeah. how do you view the next uh, step uh, uh, would be from this side and uh, another uh, stumbling issue uh, uh, would be the situation inside Libya but let me first take your uh, uh, your reading or your expectations to how uh, Turkey will uh, will respond to the warnings of yesterday no they will not uh, you know recognize the will of international community and they will uh, have this uh, kind of adamant in you know, opposition and claiming that it was uh, the presence of the Turkish and this mercenary was uh, under the, uh, the request of the uh, previous government in Libya and they will claim that. Uh, but I think uh, the international community should exert more pressure on Turkey. Turkey is a member of the NATO, so I think the, uh, the NATO member uh, can play a very important role on that. 
And uh, I think uh, uh, yesterday we have a lot of uh, insinuations that uh, we, or let us say the international community, maybe will impose some sanctions on different, you know, countries and people, even if they will uh, create obstacles and challenges in front of the election. If I may ask you about the uh, stumbling issues or those files or those uh, issues inside Libya that are still considered stumble in the way towards elections, especially that we have heard from the Libyan parliament uh, um, a will from the parliament to postpone elections until January instead yeah. of December. So how do you view uh, the challenges that are facing Libyans themselves inside Libya at yeah, this very course, particular is, time? Yes, there is uh, some inside, of course, uh, groups. They want to even boycott the, uh, the election or postpone it. I uh, can, uh, let us say, be aware of that. And I heard yesterday a lot of voices from the inside media asking to boycott this uh, election. But anyway, I think uh, the international community will not uh, allow any, uh, I would say, institution or even people uh, to uh, put this kind of uh, uh, obstacles in front of the election. But we should not undermine the uh, ability of those people to sabotage you know, the process itself. So we should be very, let us say, clear and even aware that we might have a, a sort of uh, strong uh, opposition from some uh, quarters inside Libya uh, to this election. But at least we, uh, I mean, the international community showed that we are determined uh, to go ahead with this process and we think this is the right uh, step from uh, the international community to address the Lib Libyan people in order to support the next process. And I think this will, might be uh, uh, think the end of this conflict inside Libya. And uh, I guess this will be in the interest of the Libyan people. Your Excellency, if we may speak frankly, what, what exactly is hindering Libya from moving forward? What is hindering the Libyan people from uh, returning or retaining back their country and uh, 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 returning back to uh, their position in the Middle East? The uh, uncontrolled uh, weapons uh, on the ground, the uh, narrow ambitions from certain uh, quarters and certain leaders inside Libya to, uh, let us say, pave the way for their uh, interest and try to gain some positions inside Libya. So I think this is, uh, and of course, uh, above of this, the ele two elements, uh, the other thing, which is the interference of uh, some regional countries uh, uh, on the soil of Libya. And uh, this might be uh, the three elements which can, let us say, hinder the uh, next process uh, uh, which we are aiming to accomplish uh, in the 24th of December. Um, hopefully the Libyan people would really achieve what they aspire for and hopefully Libya would return back to its uh, strong position. If I may ask you, uh, um, uh, this international conference or the visit of President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to France was also a platform for the President to meet with world leaders, particularly yeah. his meeting with a French uh, uh, President Emmanuel Macron, the Prime Minister and the Minister of uh, Defence or the uh, Minister of the French Armed Forces. How do you view these meetings? How can we describe the Egyptian-French uh, relations at this particular time? And what is the reflection on that on the Middle East region? Yes, I think uh, Egypt and France could uh, play an important role uh, for having the stability uh, and peace and development in the region, especially the Mediterranean uh, countries. And I think uh, we have uh, common ground and common even uh, strategy uh, in that regard. And I think uh, the bilateral cooperation also is enhancing uh, for the last few years. 
and uh, we can work together in different fields. And I think uh, this kind of rapport between the uh, Egyptian president and the French president, I think, could serve the interests of the two countries for the best and also the region. I think uh, we can play an important role to solve some of the chronic issues which is now prevailing in our region. Right. I guess uh, uh, we hope that things would uh, turn <laughs> to the better uh, yeah. in this upcoming stage for the Middle East because we have been seeing lots of lots and of, of, yeah. of winds and storms, no spring at all. <laughs> Your Excellency, former uh, Foreign Minister Mohammed Al Arabi, thank you so much uh, for being uh, with us over the phone and for your input. And uh, to this break, and we'll come back for a more discussion. For millions of years, the Nile has been flowing through the heart of Egypt, giving her life and fertility. For more than 40,000 years, our ancestors have been living in the valley of the Nile. Farming and planting, building a magnificent civilization, admired by the world to this day. And now more than 25% of the Egyptians working in the agricultural field which is more than 40 million Egyptians, are facing the danger of drought and thirst due to the threat of reducing the water of our lifeline. The Nile. The cause of water shortage is Ethiopia building a dam five times bigger than its needs and its intention to store 74 billion. أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله
والصلاة القائمة هات سيدنا محمدا الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه اللهم المقام المحمود الذي وعدته وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا مولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين President Abdel Fattah Sisi called Friday for setting a timetable for the withdrawal of all foreign troops and mercenaries that entered Libya after 2011. He reiterated in his speech at the Paris International Conference on Libya that Egypt is willing to support the Libyan authorities to implement the 5 plus 5 Joint Military Commission's plan in this regard, as well as uniting Libyan institutions and building capacities so that Libyans could preserve their wealth and be able to determine their fate. President Sisi also called on all parties inside and outside Libya to cease imposing the fait accompli policy, in addition to stopping to provide safe havens or any form of support to terrorist and extremist groups or transfer their members from one country to another in order to bring Libya out of its crisis and alleviate the suffering of its people. He also called on Libyan parties to resolve all disagreements and expel all foreign troops from their country to build a free and independent state. The Paris Conference is organized by the United Nations with attendance of regional and world leaders including French President Emmanuel Macron, Egyptian President Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, Tunisian Prime Minister Najla Boudin, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi, the UN envoy to Libya, Jan Kubis, the US Vice President Kamala Harris, and Libya's Prime Minister Abdul Hamid Dubeba, as well as the head of the country's presidential council, Mohamed Menfi. Early on Friday, Sisi praised the significant level of bilateral and strategic relations between Egypt and France at the political, economic, commercial, and military levels. President Sisi's comments were given during a meeting with his French counterpart, President Emmanuel Macron, at the Elysee Palace on the sidelines of the Paris summit on Libya. President Sisi arrived in Paris on Thursday to attend the International Conference on Libya in response to an invitation by the French President. On the sidelines of the Paris Conference, President Abdel Fattah Sisi met with the French Armed Forces Minister Florence Parly on Thursday. Both sides agreed on intensifying consultations and coordination during the coming period to counter terrorism. Right, welcome back and back to our discussion. And we have with us over the phone Ambassador uh, Gamal Bayoumi, former Assistant Foreign Minister. Good afternoon to you, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. Yes, we've been speaking about uh, the uh, uh, International Conference on Libya when we've been tackling the political side. I guess that the uh, Libyan conference tackled uh, a, a way out or a breakthrough for Libya from all sides, the political, the uh, economic and the social one. Uh, you're reading to the, uh, uh, this uh, conference and the outcome of it. Yes, I look to this mission as a multi-purpose conference here. Of course, well, the, ma the main target is political and security matters in Libya in order to bring all the Libyans under one flag and one unified country. But uh, mind you that Libya is our uh, partner in the Arab League, in the uh, Arab uh, free trade area. The trade between Egypt is, uh, and, and Libya is uh, getting better and better. 
although we have uh, serious matters on our borders, mind you that one dimension is very important, that the human dimension, we have two million Egyptians living in Libya and helping its development. So uh, this is one part. Another part that Egypt and France are members of the association agreement between Egypt and the European Union. So the, the, the borders between Egypt, Libya, and France uh, are open without any barriers or custom duties. This encourages us to uh, ameliorate the situation, to double our uh, trade uh, volume. And uh, the new element that Egypt is calling for more and more investment and investors to come to Egypt. And this needs to, to do our homework in order to make uh, the, the life of an investor, whether Egyptian, Arab, or uh, European, much better because the, 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 the problem now in all the developing countries is the matter of uh, time. We are wasting a lot of time because of bureaucracy, because of the banking system, because of the transport is not uh, as quick as uh, we, we, we want to see. Many things we have to do. Same time, the, the, the borders are open. So Libya also, in one dimension, uh, is not facing a financial problem. Libya is not a poor country, it is a, an oil country, and this is good and bad. Good because it means that Libya doesn't need the help of any other countries concerning finance. But bad because it, it, it makes some greedy elements try to come and put their foot in, uh, in in Libya, in order to uh, participate this in this wealth. So m many things are in mind, and we, we uh, I, I am quite sure that the Egyptian and the French diplomacy are aware of all these uh, challenges, and we are up to it. But the, the good news is that I think that there is a, a sort of uh, better situation, slowly but surely. But we have to take care until the whole process is done. Your, Your Excellency, here, in order for Libya to come back to its position or to be able to uh, fulfill uh, 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 the duties, there should be strong institutions who carry out with their responsibilities in order to be able to put Libya on track and be able to benefit from their wealth, which is oil. So it's like the chicken or the egg and who comes first, but definitely, definitely the stability of Libya should be coming first in order for Libyan people be able to benefit from their own wealth. Hence, we're speaking here about this uh, 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 conference and an Egyptian vision that was put uh, through uh, this uh, 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 conference and uh, uh, President Abdel Fattah uh, 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 laid down the vision of Egypt towards uh, 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 a better future for uh, Libya. If you spoke here about those countries who participated in this uh, uh, meeting and the um, importance of uh, their statements towards a vision for Libya. How do you view the statements uh, recalled by the participants in this conference? It is mainly positive, and I think that we have a very important task, is to guarantee to all parties in Libya that any party or any uh, tribe will have uh, its voice and its share in the Libyan uh, political and economic life, and to make sure that Every single Libyan will be better in a better situation under the Libyan United flag, uh, more than having tribes and uh, parties. And the guarantee is that the elections will go smoothly and in the right direction, that there will, no, there will never be any disturbance for elections, and uh, to make sure that it is going fair and to satisfy all uh, the participants. Okay. We want also to guarantee to those who are going to win that they will be in, in, in good position, and those who are going to lose that they, this is not the end of the world. We have to uh, uh, 
abide and to accept whatever the result of the coming elections. And it's good that they choose uh, 24th of December for both parliamentary and presidential elections in order to finish with this very important task. If we have one government in Libya uh, with the support of all the Libyans, then this is a big step forward to solve the whole problem. Then we, we have to see, because it is not uh, the end of the world, then the new government will have many tasks to be done in order to make sure that every Libyan is settled in his place and every uh, part uh, of, of the government uh, is doing his job. So it is, it is, uh, the, the task is not easy, but we are up to it. I think we, we, we wouldn't find better than Egypt and France to support this process. Thank God that the uh, European Union is supporting the Libyan unity. The NATO also is doing its best because those who are trying to occupy part of Libya or send terrorists there, we have 20,000 terrorists still there to get rid of them. It's not an easy task. Many important things must be done in order to uh, be sure that Libya is going on the right track. Your Excellency, here, um, the President's visit to uh, France and his participation in this conference gave him also the chance or it was a platform for him to meet with uh, many of the leaders. For an instant, uh, the president has uh, met with the French president, the prime minister, the defense minister, the, econom uh, the economy uh, minister, those on the French side. He also met with the head of the uh, European uh, Council. He also met with uh, several uh, leaders and uh, prime ministers and, 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 and foreign ministers and attended the UNESCO's 75th or 75th anniversary. Um, let me first take uh, your reading uh, for his meetings with those uh, uh, leaders or this chance and how important it was for uh, domestic issues, I mean Egyptian internal issues and uh, bilateral relations and regional issues as well and the importance of those meetings on the region. This is another dimension of the visit. As I said, it has the visit, it has many dimensions. And uh, here we are talking about the bilateral relations between Egypt and France. And it, it's quite obvious that the president met very important people on the executive dimension. And uh, 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 France, as one of the largest economies of Europe, which is e Egypt and e EU, are open to each other. So our trade with uh, France is almost four times, if you compare it with 2001 or 2010, uh, because of the, the dimension of the free trade area. And uh, France is keen to participate in the Egyptian development plans. We, we, we can see France here in the area of the underground, the metro, in the area of telephones, in the area of electricity, in many areas. In the area of education, the French education in Egypt is very important. Uh, as a diplomat, I must talk English and French besides uh, Arabic language, and we are part of the process of the Francophonie. Yes. Boutros Ghali was the Secretary General of the Francophonie. And uh, we are proud of this, that we have the, the multi-dimension uh, uh, of our uh, culture here. Mm. So culture. many things... Is before, uh, yeah. Yes, before we end also, there is the significance of the President's participation in the 75th uh, uh, anniversary of the UNESCO. We are supporting UNESCO because UNESCO really is very important to our uh, area, especially the position of UNESCO concerning the uh, identity of Jerusalem. They have very uh, important position there. Uh, it makes uh, a couple of uh, very big power to withdraw from the UNESCO, uh, although it is a United Nations uh, organization. 
So we, we are supporting UNESCO because it is supporting our case, especially in the Palestine question and the identity of the Palestinians and more important, the identity of Jerusalem. Also, uh, as one of the oldest civilizations in the world, Egypt, is keen to be in, in very good connections and relations with the UNESCO because, after all, it is uh, uh, taking care of our identity, uh, presenting our uh, treasures, uh, historical treasures of Mohammed and so on. So UNESCO really is doing a fine job and we are highly satisfied with its work. Very much indeed, very much indeed, and many messages that were sent by the attendance of President Abu Fattah Sisi to this uh, important gathering. Uh, Your Excellency Ambassador Gamal Bayoumi, for Mr. for Mr. we thank you so much for being with us and for your inputs here. And I guess that takes us to the end of this episode of our program, Arab Affairs. Next Saturday, we'll be tackling another important Arab file. Until then, it's goodbye.